I just thought the deadpan way of how you immediately refer to epileptic kid. Oh, yeah. Instead of everybody else and their iconic heroes. No, I, when I think of pub heroes, <laughs> it's, uh, it's him and PL. It's kind of like well, Batman and uh, Spectre, you know? That's oh, yeah, yeah, I haven't yeah. heard in a while, but... Yeah, remember when he was the potential name people were throwing out there? Yeah, but what matters is realized potential cap. And yeah. We'll get to see if he gets to continue in the tournament. Remember, uh, VP CEO, I mean, he put them on the spot. He said, we'll see how they do at this event. Oof. They are quite figuratively and literally playing for their careers here. And I, I think this is like... You're right on the cusp. You've done okay at this event. You certainly haven't bombed yeah. out, but... One more spot up against an alliance that won a Dream League oh, and yeah. won the major calls, I think that might give you enough confidence to want to continue with this team. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the stakes for them are incredibly high. And for Alliance, you know, they haven't run into too many tests this season. They've rolled over all opposition. This is do or die for them, one game away from being eliminated. Yeah, it's... It's not good enough to prove you're the best in Europe. You gotta prove you can beat some of the other regions as well here against the CIS Virtus Pro. Gonna try and go for the contest of the bounty runes. Speaking of the drafts and all these iconic heroes, who do you actually favor here? Because we did have this last pick Invoker. Quaswex Invoker, very nice versus the Timbersaw. Can be rather disruptive for heroes like Void and Leshrac. Is a is good last pick. Was it good enough to win the game for them though? Uh, I think so. I actually do like VP's draft a lot. I think that one-to-one -one hero counters, if you look at Alliance's heroes, I do think they're stronger. Uh -huh. uh, but I think overall synergy, I do like the way that VP's lineup looks. Oh, yeah. I think that VP, or uh, Alliance. Alliance. <laughs> you like the way Alliance's synergy works a lot more, right? No, I actually like VP's. You like really? Alliance's? I mean, I see VP's lineup, like, individually, I see, like, okay, this hero works against this hero, but, like, together, I just feel like it's... You've got an Enigma and a, a Chen. Yeah. You've got two junglers. I think it works because they've got a Beastmaster and a Quaswex Invoker. That'll okay. play very fast. So you actually think that, uh, do you feel like VP has the draft advantage as well? Uh, I think it's like, it's real close, but I think I would prefer to play VP's lineup. Yeah. I think like, for example, this Timbersaw will be annoying, but uh, they have a Spirit Vessel Carrier. They've got good lockdown for him. Uh, Midnight Pulse is real good against that hero. In order to make this like a little bit of a greedy lineup from VP work though, it's gotta be a, a lot of this off the back of no one's invoker, right? This is your, yes, that's really your what only I'm real on. playmaker. Uh, if it wasn't no one playing this hero and if it wasn't no one, then I might be swerving on my decision, but yeah, I feel like he was so good in it yesterday. See whether or not he is able to put the pin together to make this work. They, Beastmaster has an incredibly free lane. Yeah. He, especially with two supports behind him right now because they've just left the Phantom Lancer 1v1 against the Timbersaw, and it's a lane that actually seems to work just fine for him. So all that experience of spamming PL has clearly given VP the information that they can I think what they realize is on. there's no point in tri-laning or dual laning against this Timber. You oh, don't yeah. have any kill threat. Like, you're an Enigma Chen... Uh, the Chen itself doesn't really do anything. Like, as long as PL has access to the Courier at all times, and he gets to just spam out regen, I think he's perfectly okay with this. Like, it's annoying, sure, uh, but this is sort of just what Timbersaw does. As long as you're getting XP in some farm, I think he's perfectly fine, which he is. He still has 11 CS, not contested that hard. Nico Baby uh, at top lane has eight to his name. Meanwhile, Rezo has more or less free farm. Wouldn't be the first time that a team has tried to shut down Nico Baby's lane. In fact, VP did it before in this series. With the double dragon support duo here, Onskin and Fada. Yeah, I mean, they're gonna try lane this, but all this means is Save doesn't have to use any of his mana to uh, try to deny any of the range creeps or anything. He can just farm. That this greed is not gonna get punished. All of a sudden, he's gonna rock up with the Helm of Dom, and none of the supports on the lines can challenge him. Yeah. Ideally here, you either win your tri-lane and completely secure your Void Farm, uh, which they're not really doing either because the lane's going to get pushed in and neither of them can deal with the boar very well. 
Uh, everyone's just farming now. Like, look at this. Solo's level three. He's dead. That's going to be your first blood. 33 just chased him down. He used a full healing salve, tried to juke out 33, and he just kept running at him the entire time. Meanwhile, mid lane, this would be a great gank for VP to try and even up the odds here. Limp survives off the very fire. The second round of stones is going to be able to land and secure the kill, but Solo has gone in deep for this kill and may be turned around on by Fada. Just a couple, little bit more damage, but it's not enough. Fada can't dive past no one's invokers. Yeah, that's the only thing that can happen for them, is the uh, kill on Epileptic hit at bottom. Mm -hmm. That is the rough situation when uh, he's gonna get six now on Timber and just zone this PL out, because the rest of his two lanes are winning. So as long as you trade somewhat evenly, you'll be okay, and maybe some timely bashes will mean the end of Rezo, but he jukes around the correct tree, the boar slow is enough to deter Nico, baby, who wants to go back for all that CS. Epileptic Kid, man, this oh, is just not a lane he can sit in any longer, and I'm not sure what else they can do here. Like, maybe put Invoker bottom in, uh, in the PO mid against the Leshrig? Well, that sounds terrible. I actually think you have to kind of just continue to let this happen. This is the one downside of your draft. The other two lanes look perfectly fine, but uh, this lane is going to struggle hard. You have to just hope, though, that it's it's a Timber saw. Like, everybody kind of knows what Timber does. Yeah. They are, in fact, going to swap lanes, but Beastmaster versus Timbersaw doesn't sound too favorable either. No, that is a bad matchup for sure. Just like the basics of, hey, I summon this unit that's going to help me out. Well, it doesn't actually do anything against Timbersaw because he just tanks the extra damage, gets more reactive armor yeah. stacks. I don't know about the swap because I think maybe Rezo's too far behind. He's only level three. Uh, this Timber's level six. You have to find a way to basically do the, like a little bit of uh, creep cutting shenanigans. That's your only play against this. Epileptic Kid shows up to the top lane. It's immediately going to die. The time dilation slug him down enough. Alliance just dominating VP now. When it comes to the laning phase, they're going to try and chase down Solo. No lucky bash for Nico, baby. I feel like by making fire. this switch, you're just going to lose two lanes now instead of one. Yeah. Uh, Rezo's probably going to die here. This rain, he's going to TP out. Whirling Death not up in time. But I feel like he's ruined his own game uh, by making this lane swap. Like, every time he shows up in lane, he's just going to get run at. Well, this is going to put an abnormal amount of pressure on No One's Invoker, who we already said was going to be the key for making this draft work. He was really the only playmaker on their side for a lot of the early game. And now, seeing these side lanes lose, his team is probably telling him, boy, I hope you're ready to start rotating, because this is not going well at all. He's going to pick up an Invis rune, but you really can't ask much for, of an Invoker until he has like his uh, urn in level 8 or 9. Yeah, let's see what happens when he gets his items, though. Uh, they're still tri-laning up at top. You've got this Enigma free farming in the jungle. Uh, this Chen has run into Limp here. Should go down. Not really sure. Trying to get some creeps, and doesn't work out. Alliance will manage to keep their stack alive. In fact, Limp can farm that up after the Shrine, too. Meanwhile, 33 is just going to start playing deeper and deeper. Yeah. On so as a result that. of the lane swap, I mean, Rezo's just jungling anyways because he can't sit against his timber saw. Yeah. I would have rather the PL be in this position, Rezo stay up at top, fight with his boars. Uh, and Monster's a pretty proficient jungler anyway, right? Like, yeah. he can get level four or five and just start doing... Uh, look like at this. This is what they're going to do anyways. They, uh, they realized at the same time that that was the play. And I think they realized it maybe a little bit too late because he was doing great up here and... I think VP's like, wait a second, this actually had no purpose to the game whatsoever. Well, 33, we'll see whether or not he's gonna come up to this top lane to try and help defend, because VP's no one has shown up to be able to get a pick onto Fauna with the Chen and Eidolon, so you're gonna try and hit this tower. Alliance, are they gonna respond? Are they just gonna ignore this and play for their solo lanes? I think what you do is you let Epileptic Kid hit level, uh, like level eight, and he can push back the wave at bottom once he gets enough stat items anyways yeah. to get treads. And eventually the Timbersaw will have to move. Like he does, he moves to top right now. Now you can farm bottom. 
if you're up like the kid. That, that, that was the real point of what BP was doing top, right? They didn't think they were actually going to take that tower. They thought they were going to force the Timbersaw to rotate around. The slowdown of the cold snap as well as the boar is going to result in the kill. Fada cannot get around that EMP, but Timbersaw with the haste rune, as strong as he is, he can dive as many towers as he wants to and be perfectly fine. He's going to be able to get the counter kill onto resolution and help join this Leshrac in pressuring the mid tower. The golems will eventually die. They're trying to take up some diabolic edict stacks, but as it is, mid-tier one tower soon to fall, and VP getting really nothing out of it in exchange. Just some neutrals. Unable to get the last hit, but still the tower falls all the same. My jungle coming in, uh, Nico Baby has swap lanes towards bottom. Left a kid still keeping up at least. His levels are just fine. Time to give Nico Baby a little bit more solo experience. He was quite far behind. And Faceless Void is a carry that's still reliant on uh, levels, not just the farm. So Timbersan's gonna run around the map, creating a lot of space for him with his double bracer magic wand build. That's yeah, so levels unlikely they kill him. Armor. You just sort of, when Timbers get this fat, you just have to ignore them. Yeah. You don't fight into them, uh, not until you get the items at least. You just sort of work around them, and whenever they show up, uh, you just run. That is something Epileptic Kid is going to have to do here. Already using the Doppelganger is just going to mean that 33 very quickly cuts through the Illusions and finds the real one. Doesn't hit that Timber Chain and is going to be stalled up by the Tornado. Missing his mana. He does have a Soul Ring as well as Magic Wand stacks, so... He can still stick around for sure. In fact, if anything, might still be able to catch Epileptic Hit, manage to dodge the Chakram. Can't really get away from the Whirling Death and that last chain. It also doesn't hit Epileptic Kid. He's got a doppelganger up. Should be able to get to the other side of the cliff right as the Chakram comes out. Really nicely done. Epileptic Kid showing off some smooth moves there. Scared me a little bit. Yeah. While that was happening, though, bounty runes abound for Alliance. I think they got three out of the four. Primal Roar being used on Nefada. He wants to earn charges on no one. Yeah. He TPs in. To be able to get those earned charges, will feel a lot better with his cold snap combo. Kind of be down to see Greaves right now on this Timber Saw. Yeah. Anything to get rid of that... Uh, Spirit Vessel when it comes up, right? Cleanse off the uh, the Cold Snap and such as well. They gotta try and maybe trade off Tier 2 for Tier 1. Top tower is already dead, but the Timber Saw being bottom lane, they may still want to ignore this push. Meanwhile, Limp just taking full advantage of the jungle. He hasn't tried to join too much in these objectives. His allies have been stacking for him. He's just trying to make himself the biggest timber saw he can be. Now trying to slow down Solo, who is very much caught. And probably the bad part is, in these situations, losing your neutrals as well. So as a five position, you actually feed away a lot more golden experience than you normally would. Bottom tier two tower does get traded out. Save is here. He does have Black Hole, one level of Midnight Pulse, but... And he just got to farm away right now. Yeah, there's... The top lane uh, has already been taken. So maybe it's on him to push out the lanes, allow uh, Epileptic Kid to just farm out the triangle and allow his natural instincts to kick in. I mean, he's played a lot of PL. I'm sure he's been in some bad situations before. But Alliance right now, on the back of this Timbersaw by 33, who's being an absolute king, just running in nonstop, doesn't seem to care about anything. He's, he's playing his hero really well. I hate when Timbersaws just stick towards that bottom lane. Uh, for the entirety of the game. If you're this strong, you want to abuse the fact that you're this strong. Trying to slow down Lim. Do manage to get the Primal Roar on him, and the uh, Winter Wyvern just can't really stall this too much. He does manage to get the heal, the Cold Embrace, and with that AoE damage, Lim still managed to get the kill on Resolution. Meanwhile, the Invoker's gonna be chased down by 33, trying to slow him down with the Chakram a little bit. Long enough for Han Skin to maybe close the distance, but actually don't have any slows other than that. No yet. one doesn't have Ghost Walk for a little bit of time, but the face boost does manage to get him away from that ice path. And that should be good enough. 33. He is abusing his Timber Saw right now. He had such a good start. He's taking advantage of the fact that he's so strong. He wants to just run at these towers, help his team out. 
This is a really cool way to play Timber. He's enabling everybody else's game by being so front forward. Yeah. And instead of going for the more expensive Guardian Greaves, instead he's going to go for the Lotus Orb, which will give him a little bit more armor, but still that has too. that. Uh, a lot of single target on the side of VP too. Oh yeah, for sure. 33, going to find himself stopped by the Cold Snap, loses some mana, but that's why he built a Soul Ring. Radiance top tower is under attack. Save with this uh, four position Enigma and Helma Dominator. He has to try and push out the side lanes, but that does get him caught by Nico Baby here with an easy Chronosphere kill. Now a Maelstrom on Nico Baby, so his farm is just going to pick up. This Timber is creating so much space, and I feel like Limp and Nico Baby are taking full advantage of that. Instead of trying to join him and pressure VP's map, they are just min maxing the hell out of the map. And as a result, those three are your top net worth of the game. Alliance leading by 3k. I guess when you get the defusal on the PL, maybe you feel a little bit more comfortable taking these fights. You'll have a ton of mana burn. Uh, but as it stands, I mean, you just kind of have to continue to farm and hope you put an Alliance in a position where they feel like they have to go for the high ground. Sort of feels similar to last game, but this time around, VP do have a little bit better team fight. Middle tower but Alliance are so strong in all three of their cores in a very healthy uh, lead compared to VPs. 33 is diving in real deep right now. They don't have earned charges either to deal with him, nor do they have the Spirit Vessel anyways. No one just needs a bit more farm. Yeah, but they already have Lotus Orb. That's true. He's already got the counter before it's up. Look at this, there's three heroes oh, mid right now. I, I think uh, Beastmaster might be TP'd in. He's gonna start running in from the side if he can actually get a Primal Roar, there's but five he heroes. get away with the Timber Chain. And they're running away from him right now. There's literally five heroes. They have to kill him here. I mean, they just don't have a whole lot of magic damage. They do manage to grab mid chain with the Primal Roar into right, the Black Hole. Commitment. Wow. 1v5, 33, he's strong, but not too old. that strong. But now, it, the rest of Alliance have now shown up. They have all that farm on the Leshrac and Void. Able to get a fast kill on Epileptic Kid's Phantom Lancer. Does not take three ultis to kill him. No, and they he actually have Chronosphere coming back up in 10 seconds, so... They can keep on fighting if they want to. They don't need the Timber Saw anymore, because 33 bought enough space that a lot of their cores are online. VP, just take this opportunity to try and split push as much as possible. There's the Spirit Vessel now. Being flown out on the Courier. Save, going straight for a BKB that obviously will not be able to ensure the Black Hole every single time. There's both the Winter Wyvern's Winter's Curse as well as the Chronosphere. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways to cancel through, but I mean, at least make it easy so that uh, you don't get screwed over by things like Ice Path. As yeah. Rezo's gonna go down now, and Alliance are just... Okay, well, they showed Fada in the mid lane, and they see those two cores up top. They're like, okay, Pick up great. those charges. We can get that pick. We can get those charges. I'll see the 1v5 once again. If they had not gotten that Primal Roar off, stopping the chain, would have been a five-man rotation for nothing, but as it is, they finally did kill 33's Timber Stop, but it would, it, they, the joy of that kill did not last long. No, not at all. I feel like they should have anticipated that move, by the way. Yeah. And look, Nico Baby, Nico Baby starts off with a bash on to save, but save. He does have a tornado buying him some time, but that's why Limp shows up with his boots of travel. Slash rack. He's so fast already, but with Boots of Travel, he's going to be in every single engagement. And 33 goes back to hitting this tower. I think he told himself, well, the only way that they killed me was nobody backed me up. I got Roared, Black Holt, and five heroes dump spells yeah. attacks into me. And I still maybe could have gotten out if I had an ice path. Yeah. Something as little as your five position sitting behind you could have made a 1v5 successful for Alliance. They're just going to continue to clear through. Now they just want to be able to cut the waves, make the map much smaller, make it so VP do not get a whole lot of space to push out. Like, 
no one's going to try and do here at the bottom lane. Epileptic Kid is constantly pushing in top. Doesn't ever want to return to the base at this point because as soon as they get locked inside their base, not only are they going to get out farms, but they may give up Roshan at some point. Oh, he's got to go back for the Guardian Greaves. Making, uh... Making it so he's got so many options. To be able to having deal two with the Snap Spirit yeah. Vessel. <laughs> having two ways to deal with it is really nice, just because you assume he's got multiple charges. Yeah. There's Malphys as well. Yeah. That little mini stun can There's also actually be so much stuff. That bothers you in this game. Yeah. Alliance. Just keep on cutting through. They're going to maintain this high ground vision and just play up here constantly. It's not the kill that they were really wanting, but still a fine position in taking away all his neutrals, especially with how little space you have. This is the worst feeling for a Chen, because you come back and you're like, I can't even get into the jungle to take some neutrals, because we don't have a whole lot of jungle that we control anyway. And what little we have, it's probably being farmed up by my course. Plus, this phase of the game is where I feel like VP should have felt strong. They've got a Quaswex Invoker, a yeah. Beastmaster, uh, a Chen. You should be able to just like run as a three, four man hit squad and kill things. But 33 feels nigh unkillable. I mean, we saw how hard it was to take him down at just like the 15 minute mark in the game. Yep. It's not normal for uh, the offlaner to take that much to kill, but just goes to show you what a good start he had. He's gonna tank up this Roche. It's gonna be an easy one. Nico Baby's gonna pick it up. And 33 is already defending the bottom lane out. They do have the Diffusal Blade on that Phantom Lance. So he's trying to burn all his mana with the Illusions. That way he can stop chasing, but... The 33 actually still has enough mana pool that he might be able to chase down the Phantom Lancer entirely. There is going to be Shrine. That is up. Epileptic hit, though. Baits out the Timber Chain and goes the other direction. Smart move by him, knowing that it was very likely he'd be going for the Shrine Resolution. Trying to go for the Bounty Runes is going to get caught here by Alliance while Epileptic Kid gets out. Their other core does not. Neither does Solo. Nico Baby Solo. bash after bash by him. Anytime he gets run into by anybody, he's a free kill at this point. That is certainly true. No one trying to make some moves onto the last rack. No such luck there. As they shrine up and prepare to assault the high ground. Because it's very clear that Virtus Pro can't fight them. Best way to go about things, just force the high ground. And now it's up to our Enigma to try and find a good black hole without a BKB and without a Blink Dagger. There's so many disables on the side of Alliance. You sort of just, just have to run into awesome. it. Look at how far back Fada is. Yeah. He will always be there with the Ice Path, with his positioning. Both supports, in fact, just hitting way far behind. Okay, you know they can just let 33 hit. Still have the Aegis. They should just... Uh, Walk up this hill and be unafraid on these two cores. That's exactly ah, Carter's doing. Locking out the two. They're going to be able to get resolution as well as no one. A perfect duo to be able to lock down, especially with the Macro Fire Ice Path. The black hole does nothing. Die. The black hole just controlled up 33. That's all it did. It didn't really do any damage at all. And Alliance are now sitting and looking at Virtus Pro, saying, You really don't have much left yeah, at no all. Left. Even with the buybacks, there's no damage that's going to be coming out. A great winner's curse. Actually catching Epileptic Kid and putting him on top of no one. They're going to be able to get the chain stun out. They last track trying to finish off. No one will be able to do so. And this is looking like a game that Alliance just is unstoppable. They're going to be able to chase down some more heroes. His save is going to be caught by the Timber Sun. Timber chaining on back. They'll leave Solo for now. They don't need to kill him. They're going to try and go for a bigger quarry in Epileptic Kid. Pulling back that Chakram, not quite slowing down Epileptic Kid enough. 33 is now going to be burned out of his mana. He does have 19 Magic Wand charges as well as a Soul Ring, enough to be able to get a Timber Chain for sure. But Alliance, diving in so deep, haven't actually finished off the barracks yet. Perhaps a bit of oversight as they are trying to chase down and beat VP out of this game. Oh, Solo. Just like Solo is being done right now. Nico Baby still has that Aegis, so that's why he's diving in so fearlessly. But eventually, they're just going to be burned out of mana and may not feel good about forcing these fights anymore. So it looks like, yeah, Alliance are going to back up and will have to just content themselves with shrines and buybacks being used on the side of VP. We saw that solo black hole. 
in this mid lane engagement after trying to slow down this Timbersaw. He really did slow down. Damage. It didn't even stop damage because he already had the chakra out. I, I actually think uh, that was their only way to fight is if he hit some sort of like sick four man black hole. The funny uh -huh. part is uh, they didn't even bother canceling it. Like, yeah, eh. whatever. All right. Sure. It's it's a Timbersaw. It's a Timbersaw who already used Chakra, and he was just sitting there channeling the entire time. He was slowly regenning off of his stacks. True. He's just like, this is an okay, comfortable spot to be in. And like, <laughs> you would just rather see Sage not use a black hole at all in that fight. Yeah. Other than that, it's got to be the threat. You have to. Like, the only way you're turning around this game is a damn near miracle black hole, you know? And that wasn't it. So wait for a better opportunity. This alliance will give you more opportunities as they're going to go high ground very soon. 30 seconds left for the black hole. going to smoke. Uh, I mean, the team lacked damage before. I'm not sure where it's going to come from now. They got to get some sort of like wrap around or somehow get into this back line. That's where Resolution's heading to. It's here with the smoke. It's got to find somebody, but they have so many have a whole different lot of damage to up. An early like Shadow Blade. Team. Maybe Epileptic Kid can, with this Primal Roar, quickly execute some of these supports. Immediately gets on top. Fauna has to doppelganger right away. There goes that Primal Roar. Laid out into Hanskin. They do have the Meteor coming in, but it's a little bit too slow and just not enough damage. Resolution, with the time dilation on him, is so slow. Two down, Virtus Pro. Now left with three. Well, make it just one, because this two-man Chronosphere is going to take down both no one and save quite easily and force Virtus Pro to call the GG. I really think that as well as Alliance played VP shot themselves in the foot when they decided to go for the lane change. Yeah. They were doing fine at top, they were doing fine in mid, but when they decided to send the Beastmaster bottom, the PL died anyways at top. Now your Beastmaster's level four and he can't enter the lane at bottom. He immediately has to TP out and he's forced to jungle anyways. So instead of ruining one game really hard, you decided to tank two lanes really badly well, I can tell you there's a lot of fans here at Hamburg that are quite happy to see Alliance move on. I talked to a few people this morning, a lot of Alliance fans out there as they are the greatest hope for Europe at this tournament. So they will be moving on. Virtus Pro, who have had some good times.